Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about everything you need to know to get through objects 5 and 6. Um, the main uh, new tools you're going to be using are um, creating cuts instead of, it's like in the past when we've been making 3D objects we've been extruding them and giving them depth. Um, on this object we're going to be doing that and then we're also going to be chopping out material. Um, to make some holes. Like you can see in this object here, there's a big hole here and there's a small hole here. We're going to talk about how to make those. Um, we're also going to talk about using 3D fillets. In the past we used fillets on a 2D sketch. Um, on this model we're actually going to use a 3D fillet to curve um, a 3D object. And all this will make sense as we go along. Um, okay, so let's jump into it. I'm actually going to walk through object uh, five step by step and then I'm going to um, I'm going to give you a couple tools to get through six but I won't take you through that one exactly. All right so as always we start with the new button in the top left. We're going to make a standard .ipt. Um, IPT stands for inventor part for those of you that care. And we'll start by creating a 2D sketch. So start 2D sketch in the top left, pick a plane, doesn't matter. Most of these objects, it's best to start sketching the front view, which is the, the view in the bottom left. Um, and we are, as before, we're gonna put the bottom left corner of that view right on the origin. So I'm gonna start with my line tool start on the origin and we're going to work our way to the right. So I know we need to go to the right three inches, do three enter, zoom in a little bit so that I can see my whole line here. Um, it says that we go 0.8 up. And then I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to explain this in a minute, but we don't know how far to the left we're supposed to go, it doesn't tell us. And then it's saying that we're going 1.25 up at some angle little bit confusing. All of this will make more sense in a minute. Why not, for now, let's just sort of eyeball this and then we'll come back in and use our dimension tool and make it all the right size. So I'm just going to sort of guess um, and just draw the general shape here. Okay, so I'm going to come back in with my dimension tool now and I'm going to tell these lines exactly how big they need to be. So I know this one is supposed to be 1.5. I know this one is supposed to be 0.5. And then it's saying that this one is supposed to be 1.25, but notice on here it says the dimension is like parallel to that, where right now it's only letting me draw like a vertical or a horizontal dimension, which is like the distance from here to here, but like horizontally. So this isn't really the distance of that line. So in order to get our, uh, our measurement the way it's supposed to be, let's right click and then there's this aligned option at the very top here. So I click on aligned and then notice my dimension is now parallel, it's aligned. And then I can tell that to be 1.25, hit enter, and bam, we should be good. So as with our other objects, if you've noticed when we're dimensioning around, there'll always be at least one section that you don't need to dimension because this has to be whatever's left over, 1.464. It has to be a certain distance. If all the rest of these are set in place, then there's only one distance that could be. So if I try and dimension that, it's gonna get mad at me. It's not necessary. Okay, so this front view is done. We are gonna finish the sketch, and then we're gonna extrude. Um, if I'm looking at my um, model over here on the left, I can see from this view that it's supposed to be 1.5 wide. So I'm going to set the distance to be 1.5 um, and then hit enter or press OK. So now I'm, I'm just kind of getting a better view here um, by clicking on this cube in the top right, my view cube. Um, I've got the general shape down, but we're missing anything curvy. It's all boxy right now. So. What we're going to do, we are going to uh, fillet these two corners to round them out and make them look like this rounded surface here. So if you guys look at the top of your screen, we're in this 3D model tab right now. There's a fillet tool 
Um, it just shows like a rounded corner of a 3D object as its picture. So we'll click on that. Um, it brings up all these options and we can get into some advanced fill it options later. But what we want to do is, is change this radius right here. If you click on the 0.125 standard, you can click on that and type in a new radius. On our drawing, it says there's an arrow pointing to this curve. It says radius or R is 0.75 times 2. Times 2 means there's two corners that we fill it off at 0.75. That's this corner and then this corner down here. So we're going to set our, our radius to 0.75. And then we're going to click on these two corners here and it's going to round those off for us. Um, once I see those projected here, I can hit OK. And those are good. Okay, next step on this one. Um, we need to create the hole in the top of the object. So this is the first time we, that we've done this, but what's cool about this program is after you've got a 3D object created, you can sketch on a surface of that object. So instead of just sketching on one of those three planes like we did before, I can now hit Start 2D Sketch and select a surface to sketch on. So we're going to sketch on this surface because we're going to be making this hole that you see in the object model over here. Um, to make the hole, we're going to use our circle tool. And the tricky thing here is trying to figure out how to center this circle so that it's exactly centered at, wow, I actually did a really good job there just guessing, but I'm not quite perfect. So um, there is a way to get this circle lined up so that it lines up with two um, fillets that we just drew. If you hover your mouse over those curves that we created with our fillet tool, you can see there's like a black anchor you can click on. If we center on that anchor, then our two circles are going to be concentric and they'll line up. So based on my drawing over here, it says that the uh, diameter should be one. So I'm going to type one, hit enter, and we're good there. I'm going to finish this sketch. And now we're going to use the extrude tool again, but instead of having it create more, um, that's what we call it is a, a join. We don't want to make more mass out of this. We want to actually cut this profile out and make a hole out of it. If you look towards the bottom of the properties window, there's this cut button. If I click on cut, you'll see that it goes the other direction and shows that we're going to be removing material along that profile. So I'll hit OK. And if we change our view, you can see we've got a hole now going all the way through the object. Um, we're going to do something really similar to make the hole on um, this slanted surface. And then I'll show you one more important tool there. All right, so we are going to start a new sketch. Um, we're going to put it on this um, slanted surface here. And then we're going to draw a circle. Now the tricky thing here um, is positioning this circle correctly. So I'm going to talk about how to do that. If I look at my drawing, it's saying that the, it, our, our measurement should be 0.5 for the diameter, so I will type in 0.5 and hit enter. But making sure that the circle is now in the correct spot is the trick. So notice if you look close, it's saying that it's from the center of the circle to this edge of the object, it's 0.75. So I click on my dimension tool and then I'm going to hover right over the top of the center dot. Notice it's not highlighting this cross um, dimension. It's just, just that little dot is now green. So I'm going to click on that little dot. I'm going to click on this outside wall and then move my mouse to the side and so I can see this dimension start to show up, 0.792. Um, I'm going to click one more time and I should be able to now type in how far I want that to be away. 0.75 is what my drawing tells me. So 0.75 from that wall. And then it's saying from the center of the circle down to this uh, line down here, it should be 0.6 away. So I am going to click on the center of the circle, click on that line down there, type 0.6 and hit enter. Now this circle is has been forced to be positioned exactly where I want it to be. It's the right size, it's also in the right spot. So we're ready to roll. I'm gonna hit finish sketch. 
And then I'm going to again use the extrude tool. And again, we don't want to create more material out of that circle. We want to cut it out. So I'm going to click on the cut button down here. It's got a red square on it. And I'm going to look from the side really quick. I want to make sure that this goes all the way through the object. I can tell by looking at this drawing over here that it's going all the way through. And, and right now, it's not quite reaching all the way through. I can see there's a little corner still left over. So um, there's a couple ways to do, this, to do this. One, you can grab the arrow and just drag it to make that extrusion longer. Um, that works. It's not a very refined way of doing it because you can't type in the number. So that's an option though, you can drag through. It doesn't matter how much farther through we go, there's nothing out here to cut. So as long as it's through everything solid, then we're good. Another option, there's this through all button here. I tend to use this one the most. So if you click through all, then it just knows, okay, anything anywhere in this path is gonna be chopped out. And then lastly, you could just type in a distance that's big enough to go all the way through. So there's a few options there. I'm gonna do the through all option hit OK and let's look from the from the angle here I've got a hole that's going all the way through now one of the ways that I designed this just to make sure that it was done correctly uh, when I go to pass it off with students if I'm looking from the back it should like sort of clip this back corner just a little bit So I should see just like a little bit of that circle profile clipping into the back wall. Um, I did that deliberately so that I could see that you did it correctly. Okay, so that's object five from start to finish. Let's look at object six briefly and uh, talk about that one. So I'm going to go to new, standard. All right. We're going to sketch this front view again. Um, I'll get the outline sketched out here. So 2.75, or 1.5 up, 0.5 over. Looks like 0.75 down. a little bit of math to figure out how far over to go now. So 1.25 looks like 1.5 over. I did a little mental math to figure that out. We're going up 0.75 again. And then over 0.75, connecting back down. Bam. Okay. So there's our front view. We're going to extrude it. Based on the drawing, if I look at this side view here, it says it's 1.5 wide. So I'm going to extrude this thing 1.5. Um, right now, it's basically a boxy version of this. Uh, next thing we need to do is get those um, corners rounded off. Um, looking from this side view, it's saying that the radius is 0.75, and it says times 4 because there are four corners, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that all need to be chamfered at 0.75. So we need to, or sorry, filleted. So I'm going to use the fillet tool, 0.75, and then click on these corners. And it will round them off. I'll hit OK. There we go. Um, I'm going to look from the side. And this is as far as I'm going to go on this model. And then, uh, students, you can do the rest. But I just wanted to show one more example of sizing and positioning um, a sketch using the dimension tool. So if we sketch on this back side here, I'm going to be sketching this little rectangle hole. and positioning it correctly as well. So when I draw this rectangle, I want to make sure I'm not snapping to any lines. Um, because if it's if I snap to a line like this line, it's going to keep the sketch stuck to that line and it may not be where we want it. So I'm going to make sure I'm like snap free when I draw it so that I can dimension it um, perfectly. So I want this to be 0.75 wide according to this dimension here. It looks like it is 0.3 tall, so we'll dimension this 0.3. And then it's telling me that we are 0.4 from this left side of the rectangle to the left side of this object. So I'm going to click this left line here. I'm going to click this left line here. 
and then I can tell it how far away to be from there. We want it to be 0.4. And then again, we're going to do the bottom line to this bottom edge of the object, and it's saying that it should be 0.8. And now that is perfectly positioned. Not only is it sized correctly, but it's also positioned correctly. So we can finish sketch. And again, we use the extrude command, but we're going to go to cut. And I'm going to click on through all, and it's going to go through the whole object. I know that it goes through the whole object because when I look at the picture, I can see that there's two holes here. Um, I can see from this front view, these little dashed lines are indicating that there's a hole going through right there. Um, and then there's also a note here, cut rectangle through both sides. So I know that I need to go through everything here. All right, um, I'll hit OK or Enter. Yeah. And then I'm going to leave the circle to you, um, the, the hole here in the middle, to create it, dimension it, position it. Okay, that's it.